Okay, so Valentine's Day may be over, but I want you guys to take a look at this video. It's a video that I made 11 years ago, believe it or not, for Christelle on Valentine's Day. It's actually one of the very first motion design projects I worked on, making a lyric video to Bruno Mars's Just The Way You Are. Every time she asks me, do I look okay? I say. Holy shit, that song is so fucking old. A year later, I did it again with Kanye West, Rihanna, and Childish Gambino. So fly, girl, you're so fly. So fly, girl, you're so fly. Both of these videos aired at our high school on Valentine's Day, and both of these videos were made entirely using After Effects. Now, I know a bunch of you watching are probably like, Nate, how am I supposed to make this? I can hardly even afford After Effects. Well, don't worry because the techniques used in this video are so easy and simple to use that in no time you will be wooing all the geeks. <laughs> Are you a nerd, babe, or a geek? Well, guess what? I am not a nerd or a geek. That is probably you. Just look at your background, <laughs> and that says a lot already. I think all you guys need to take a look at is this photo. Guess what? I aired this video for our first Valentine's Day, and 11 years later, she agreed to marry me. So yeah, this shit works. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, today we're going to be going over how to use After Effects to create text animations for trailers, lyric videos, all sorts of stuff. We're starting from absolute ground zero. So don't worry if you haven't even touched After Effects before. We're going to be covering the absolute basics of text animation in After Effects. I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. Okay, so text animation in After Effects is an absolute must learn skill for the program. I know that we've gone over VFX before, we've gone over K-pop edits, fire in the hand, but guess what? Text animation is something I do time and time again for clients and for even my own personal fun creative projects like this one right here. Don't worry if this looks like a whole lot of stuff going on because we're gonna be breaking this down from the absolute basics. Have not touched After Effects before, you're gonna to wanna to stick around. And hey, even if you're an After Effects vet, maybe you're gonna learn some techniques that are gonna help you speed up your workflow in doing something like this. Now, this is the part where you guys go ahead, sit back, relax, go get a coffee, take a hit, do whatever you need to do to get in the zone because we're gonna be starting this in five, four, three, two, one. All right. Boop. And as you can see, I am in After Effects. At the top here, we got the toolbar. You can go ahead and click File, save out this project because Adobe After Effects is a software that crashes so freaking much. Like I, I almost guarantee every single project I do has at least one crash. And so you're gonna wanna make sure you save it so that that auto save kicks in. If it crashes, you're not sitting there at your computer, depressed, super tired and sad. Gotta muster up the last bits of your courage to do everything all over again. So anyways, make sure you save it out, something cool so you remember it. And and once you got that saved, we're gonna go ahead and make a new composition. Now, if you haven't heard of a composition before, think of it like a frame or the video holder. Pretty much it's where all these assets, where all the things that we're gonna be moving take place in. For this video that you're watching right now, it was actually made in a composition that would have been 1920 by 1080p at 60 frames per second. But for your text animations, you can go ahead and make it whatever you want. If it's for Instagram, go ahead and use, you know, maybe a 500 by 500 or 1000 by 1000 so you get that one by one aspect ratio or if you're going to make it for youtube or for some other video formats maybe use a 16 by 9 format but i will recommend you not to use 60 frames per second for this text animation just because I feel like it looks kind of weird. And for the most part, people still enjoy looking at lower frame rates for the 2D animation stuff. So you even see stuff like this pop up more in, what was that, Spider-Man Enter the, Spider-Man something. It was like the newest Spider-Man movie. And also in box style animations, you're gonna see this a lot too, where they play around with low frame rates. We even did it too in a video that we made for All Def, I think like two years ago. It looks pretty good. Another benefit of having that low frame rate is that when we start working into this project, you're gonna also see lower render times because the less frames you have to render is the less time it takes to render that makes everyone happy so you don't need a super insane decked out computer to get started okay so i'm gonna make this 1080p at 24 frames per second and i'm gonna go ahead save out the project now the first step to animating text is to create a new text layer and you're gonna see that you can create a new text layer by clicking all the way over here and selecting the text tool and then we can click anywhere inside 
inside of our composition, inside of this composition window here to create a new text layer. Now go ahead and type in some text. Make sure that you spell it right. So over here, you can see at the character window is where we're gonna get the options to change the text settings such as font size, font weight, even whatever font you want. <laughs> whatever font you want. <laughs> if you don't have this window, make sure that you go all the way up to the window here in the toolbar and click on character or text styles. And you're gonna get to see all these options pop up, dock it in here wherever you need to. So I'm gonna have this text looking kind of right here with these settings. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and reposition this text inside the center of the composition. So I'm gonna use these safe margins right here and select it to turn them on. That way I can see where the center of this composition is. I think right now the text is going over this uh, safe margin for text just a little bit, but I think that's fine. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna do is create a new text layer and make sure that you spell it right because you don't wanna go and render out a video with some wrong text and have to have people laugh at you on the internet being like, yo, you misspelled. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the GIF or something. Next thing that we're gonna do is create a new null object by right clicking here and selecting new null object. Then I'm gonna reposition this null object roughly in the center of the composition and I'm gonna parent the text to the null. This is gonna allow me to change the text and rescale it so that it fits right here inside of the safe margin. Okay, and then now the next step is gonna seem a little funky, but we're gonna make a new solid and I'm gonna specifically make it gray. That way I can see it. Once that new solid is made, I'm gonna scale it down to roughly the height of the text and parent this to the null and turn off the visibility, which you can see right here. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and rename this solid to matte because that is what it's gonna be. If you guys don't know what mats are, if you've ever used Photoshop, it's pretty similar to a clipping mask. Okay, so now that we have this matte layer, let's go ahead and make sure that it's or right above the text layer and change its settings to alpha matte. Now you can double check and see if you drag the text out of this matte, it's gonna disappear and become invisible immediately. All right, so cool, this is looking pretty good. Okay, so next thing that we're gonna do is animate the position. So to pull up the position settings, let's press P on the keyboard while we have that text layer selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little stopwatch icon, which is gonna create a brand new keyframe. If you haven't heard of keyframes before, pretty much all this keyframe is, is a little point of information that says, be here at this point at this time for this text layer. Let's go ahead and drag this keyframe now over to about the one second mark, since this is gonna be the final keyframe Next, I'm gonna go ahead and select the position of this text layer and drag down the Y value so that the text goes down and outside of the box. Now let's go ahead and place this keyframe at the beginning of the timeline if it's not already there because this is gonna be the starting point. Now to preview this animation, let's press space on the key bar. <laughs> on the keyboard, what the heck is a keyboard? <laughs> to preview this animation, let's go ahead and press space on the keyboard. And right now this is looking a little bit slow. I think one second might be too slow for this animation. So how about we shorten this by about half and that is gonna be at the 12 frame mark. So let's go ahead and drag this end keyframe to the 12 frame mark right here in the timeline. Okay, so this timing feels a little bit better, but if we stagger the animations between this text, we're gonna get something way more interesting. And not only that, but we can actually direct the viewer on how to actually read the text. So if you've ever watched a commercial or a trailer and you've seen text animate on one at a time, you're gonna notice that you're actually reading the text in the order that it animates on. Not only does that allow you to sometimes read faster, but it's a really great tool for telling a story with text and motion design together. This makes animating on and revealing text in a specific order a really great technique to enhance your communication with motion design. Just take a look at this Apple trailer, which freaking kills it. Which is pretty much an idea that they also got from this Honda commercial. Shoot, we even do this on the channel intro whenever you guys are watching. 
yeah, now you guys have your own reveal to mess around with and you guys can make this text say whatever, but let's go ahead and add in a little bit more flair to make this pop because sure, the animation feels fast enough, but it still feels a little bit robotic and stiff. So the timing of this animation is a little bit better, but it still feels robotic and stiff. And that's mainly because its speed is linear and that just means that it's going in a straight line at a constant speed. Now let's go ahead and add a nice bezier to it. I normally use plugins like Motion or I think even Duik might let you do this too. But there's quite a few plugins that allow you to make these animation tweens a lot faster and easier. But if you don't have a plugin, don't worry. You can go ahead and do this right in After Effects with the bare bones minimum as well. So if you're interested in doing that, what you want to look for is this graph icon right here. It's going to become your best friend and it is the animation graph editor. So let's go ahead and click on this. And once we pull this up, if we have that layer selected, we're going to go ahead and right click in the graph and select edit speed graph. And as you can see, we have just a straight line. And if we hit play on the timeline, you're going to see this animation looks super stiff. But once we click on these two little handles here, it's going to start to make a nice curve. And that just means that the animation speed is ramping up and slowing down. The position is still at the same points at the same time. It's just the time it takes for them to get in between them or the interpolation is getting altered based on this curve. I really love a nice ramp up and ramp down. That way the animation feels poppy. And especially for something so short like this, I think we can go ahead and get away with that. You guys can also play around with the animation editor. Not really like any hard set rules though. There are some graphs that I use time and time again and a lot of other animators use just because they mimic certain aspects of the natural motion of things. There's all kinds of them. Don't worry about it when you're just starting out though. Make sure you go ahead, play around with the animation curve editor and see how After Effects interpolates between keyframes. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Now to close the graph editor, all you gotta do is click on this graph icon again. Bam, it disappears. So if we stagger these clips again, I'm thinking that this is a pretty decent animation. You can stop here, but I think it would look even cooler with a really subtle scale up effect as well for that second text. Okay, so to add a scale effect, let's go back to that null object that we created earlier. We're gonna press S on our keyboard. This is gonna pull up the scale properties the same way that we added a position keyframe for the text we're going to do this with the null object but with the scale property so go ahead and click on that stopwatch icon and that's going to make a brand new keyframe so let's scale it up and move this new keyframe that was created to just about the end point of the beginning animation of that text for the second one. Now, if that looks a little bit confusing, just go ahead and look at that timeline. If you have all of the layers selected, you can press U on your keyboard and that's gonna pull up all the keyframes that you've ever created. That's just a nice way to organize things and to see everything laid out. Okay, so right now the scale is looking super wonky and I think that's because it's just scaling up way, way too much. Now, as my own personal rule, I try to keep scales just within 20% if they're happening in a short amount of time. So let's crank this value all the way down to 75%. That way it scales from 55% to 75%, which is just at that cusp of my maximum when it comes to doing these scales. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool, but let's also add that same animation curve to the scale properties as well. So let's go ahead, click in the animation graph editor, right click and change the speed graph, and then go ahead and drag these handles so we get a nice Nice ramp up and ramp down for the speed. Okay, sweet. So this is looking pretty good. I think that we're almost set to go ahead and render this out. Right now, my timeline though is just way too long. So I wanna make sure that everything ends at one second. That way, when I render this out, I get a nice looping animation. So let's go ahead and drag these handles down. And if I have my timeline cursor at the one second mark, a really super useful uh, shortcut to use is Alt and Bracket while you have all of the layers selected. And that's gonna clip every single layer at that exact point so that you don't have them extending further. Okay, so this is looking pretty good, but for a looping animation, I think I also want to animate out this text. So we have everything animating on in this first 12 frames. If we have one second of animation, we still have another gap there that we can play around with. So let's go ahead and move that playhead all the way over to the one second mark, and I'm going to lock in all those keyframes at that point. So I want the text to come on at one second. That that way people have enough time to read it and then let's animate off at one second 12 frames which is just about one and a half seconds. 
Now to animate off, I'm going to add brand new keyframes. Now let's drag the position of the text all the way up so that it falls outside of the rectangle mat that we created earlier and becomes invisible. Since we just created a brand new keyframe, we're also going to want to go ahead and adjust that animation graph editor as well so it has the same ramp up and ramp down that we created earlier. And then I'm going to scrub over and let's go ahead and add in a brand new keyframe at one second, 12 frames. So this is looking pretty good and we can stop here, but I think you guys might have a lot of fun also playing around with adding additional effects to this text. I've seen people add all sorts of things like VHS effects, glitch effects, motion trail effects, the one I showed you guys earlier was one in which I actually use a motion trail just by using the echo effect in After Effects. It comes right up the bat. Let's go ahead and right click on this layer and select time and then go to echo. And let's go ahead and add a keyframe so that the echoes start once the text starts moving up and out of the animation. Now I'm also gonna tweak how their decay animates. Pretty much their decay just means how bright they are, what their opacity setting is when they first show up on the screen and how they animate off. Bam, just by changing the background, as you can see I'm playing around with here, it already looks pretty cool. Looks well worthy for a trailer or even this video right now. Now that everything is looking pretty good, I can go ahead and set it to render. The really cool thing about this effect is that everything is entirely modular. So once you guys have your animation set, you have your keyframe set, as long as you have enough positioning between these two text layers, you should be well to go change this text to say whatever you want it to say. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this to render. I'm gonna go ahead and click all the way up in the composition and add to render queue. You guys can go ahead and mess around with the settings, but I'm just gonna leave them at quick time animation because it works pretty well and it also renders super fast. The only downside is that it is gonna be a really huge file size. So if you guys are concerned about file sizes, go ahead and set that to 8.264. It's one that is highly compressed, works really great for all sorts of media sharing. Now, depending on how fast of a computer you got or how slow of a potato it is, this render could either take a few seconds or a few minutes. But if you're watching this video, it's going to be instant because bam, you got this animation and it's looking super dope. Now, I want you guys to go ahead, take a second, pat yourselves on the back because you guys sat through learning the absolute basics of the text animation and creating kinetic text in After Effects. It's a super useful skill that when you start taking on, I guarantee if you ever wanna go out there and take on some sort of freelance work, you're gonna find people needing kinetic text for trailers, for music videos, for lyric videos, and yeah, the list goes on and on and on. Now, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Congrats to the giveaway winners of the Data Mosh plugin. It was really fun getting to share this with you guys. And guess what? Don't worry if you guys did not win this giveaway because since you all loved it so much, we're gonna be bringing it back we're gonna be doing all sorts of giveaways this year you know it's 2021 biden won covid's done let's go <laughs> got the new studio it's still a work in progress so thanks for bearing through this and uh waiting so long i know that these videos y'all are excited for so make sure that you go ahead and smash that like button so that youtube keeps sharing it with you guys and also make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you are not subscribed already so you don't miss out because we got all sorts of stuff planned and once this studio is done you're not going to want to miss it anyways thanks for watching as always i hope to catch you on the next one peace